Guys, Mark Goldberg here from Mark Vlogs Watches with a quick word for your friend and mine, Archie Luxury, Paul Pluta, AC3, Archibald Chesterfield III. You know, he invented the quick whist watch check, and uh, the rest of us on YouTube, well, we just stole it. Help keep Archie full-time on YouTube by liking this video, watching this video, tell your fuckhead friends, and make sure to subscribe to his Patreon. And now, Archie Luxury. Hey guys, it's Paul Pluter. Paul Pluter on the Paul Pluter channel. Today, guys, I am doing paid watch reviews. And let's start this. We're doing JU53. And let's uh, do a quick wristwatch check. I'm wearing a Patek. Patek 5296. 5296. Okay, guys, let's jump in here. This is a rather a, a long one, but let's uh, let's let's have a um, let's have a sticky beak. Dear Pontiff, I hope this email finds you well. Uh, I know from your vids over the past few days you seem a bit green. <clears throat> I hope it is just from the cigars and that you're not falling ill. Your fans need you at full Pontiff strength and posting great content every day. My name is Nathaniel, and I'm a 45-year-old attorney from Florida. 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 Okie dokie. I have been happily married for 20 years and have three wonderful children. I was gifted my first real watch when I graduated law school close to 20 years ago, but only really got into the hobby of collecting in late 2018 when I changed jobs after being with the same company for 16 years to working for the government. At the time, I came into possession of my great uncle's late 1950s solid gold Le Coultre triple date that I had serviced and put back on a period correct alligator strap. It was at that time that I was totally hit with the bug and began collecting, a collecting spree. My wonderful wife has been very supportive of the hobby, hobby mostly because I lead a relatively pedestrian life. She jokes that if watches are my midlife crisis, we can still pay the mortgage and put the kids through school. Good Lord, children are expensive. She's okay with it. I appreciate her more than I could possibly say in an email. I came upon your channel in early 2019 and watch or listen to your reviews every day, usually while I'm on the treadmill or out for a walk. I appreciate the advice you have given and many of the watches and brands you have turned me onto and off of. I'm also a Patreon member and encourage others to do the same as well. Thank you. Patreon keeps me full time on YouTube. Okie dokie. Very, very nice indeed there. Even a buck or two a month from enough people will keep you will keep help you keep putting out great content full time. While last year, when the uh, bug hit me, I picked up a number of pieces of varying quality. A late model steel Cartier Pasha that I remember liking when it came out. A Seamaster GMT from the 2000s. A Speedmaster Automatic. Various Seiko as a result of listening to the other gurus. But since I started following your channel and realizing the simple beauty and quality of Rolex, I've focused my collecting here. I lucked into a great AD, local AD in Fort Lauderdale, who, despite my having never bought from before, has gotten me a number of hard-to-get pieces and has earned my customer loyalty for the foreseeable future. I'd like to share my collection with you and get your thoughts on what I have now, what I expect to pick up later this year, and get your advice on non-Rolex purchase pieces you think may round out the collection. After my 2019 binge buying, I want to hold off and limit myself to one piece a year through to age 50. So after the long email, thank you for your indulgence. Here is the meat of my collection. Number one, two-tone Rolex Datejust 36 mil with white dial, gold Roman numerals on an oyster bracelet, reference 16233 S serial number, 2000, sorry, 1993 model was gifted to me upon graduating law school in 2000. I enjoyed the two-tone immensely, even though it's an older man's watch, and it is just a classy piece. I have a sentimental attachment to it as a gift from my parents, and it is something 
I'll never let go. My wife en also enjoys wearing it. And I hope one of my daughters will appreciate it when they get older and wear it as well. Number two, 1950s, Le Coutre Triple Date. This solid gold piece has been in my family since it was originally purchased new by my great uncle, who was Rat Pack Cool back in the time of Frank Sinatra. He taught me to play blackjack and other casino games when I was about seven years old. And when I wear the piece, I think about him in Atlantic City or Las Vegas trying to take the house for big money at cards. I can only hope to be one-tenth as cool as he was. Number three, Tudor Black Bay Burgundy in-house on a bracelet, reference 79230R. Purchased new from Joma Shop at 20% discount from retail. Number four, Rolex Datejust 2, 41 million steel with smooth bezel oyster bracelet with blue dial, reference 116300. Bought this 2015 piece on eBay, risky move I know, for a steep discount, came with full box papers and tags, had the watch checked out upon receipt and it was in perfect order and still under warranty through to July 2020. My work watch when wearing a blue or dark grey suit or when I'm just in jeans as well, so versatile to dress up or down with. Number five, Rolex Milgauss green glass with black dial reference 1164 zero zero gv bought new from an ad earlier this year and got a small discount saw it in the case walked in and fell in love with the colors especially the orange lightning bolt second hand my younger two kids say it reminds them of harry potter harry potter and they like me wearing it i love wearing this when i have some green in my work attire or on the weekend number six rolex gmt master two root beer two-tone reference one two six seven one one C H N R got this from new from an AD earlier this year called the AD just after Basel World and the discontinuation of the GMT black 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 and asked if there would ever be a slot of a new buyer getting any kind of GMT the manager and I clicked in our conversation and she gave me her cell number and said to check in from time to time and she'd let me know after 10 days and a few text messages later she called me out of the blue to say a two-tone root beer and a two-tone sky dweller came in and I would, would I like to look at them. I saw the root beer and fell in love with it in person and bought it on the spot. What a stunning piece with rose gold. My wife enjoys wearing it also since she loves a chunky watch. This is my watch for work occasion when I am dressing up. Number seven, Rolex Ceramic Submariner. Reference 116610LN. Got this new from the same AD that I bought the root beer form. A call over there or text on a weekly basis to see if any watches come in that I may be interested in. On Friday evening, I got a call that a sub date came in and I and was asked if I liked it. I asked if they could hold it for the weekend since I wasn't available and they said they would. What a beautiful piece. Ceramic just adds something like it does on the GMT. Brings this whole watch to a whole new level. It's the watch I wear the most right now. Number eight. Tudor Black Bay Burgundy ETA movement on a leather strap. I also have the NATO and bracelet for this. Bought from a friend via Pace Facebook, and I've met and and that I've met through the watch community. He's an avid collector of music memorabilia and gotten into watches around the same time I did. And we just clicked, got it for a prize, twenty two hundred US with bracelet. Leather strap, NATO box and papers. While having two burgundy black bay seems a bit indulgent. The pieces are different enough that I enjoy that I have en that I get enjoyment from both. And at the same point, I'm sure I'll sell one and still have one to enjoy for years to come. Number nine, Rolex, Rolex Explorer One, reference two one four two seven zero, Mark Two, gold outline, Loom three six nine. This was a spur of the moment purchase from the same idea that I got a root beer and sub from. I stopped by for a quick hello and, and a talk about a piece for my wife, rose gold steel diamond dial datejust, which is now on order, and they showed me this, which, 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 was just put in the case. Since I had the funds available, I decided to pick it up, and I'm just wowed by it. It's the perfect complement to the Submariner, in my opinion. They serve similar purposes as daily wear watches, but in very different ways. Sorry for the lengthy email. Feel free to summarize this however you think appropriate. Later this year, my AD told me they will be getting 
for me either a Jubilee Batman or the Pepsi, which I intend to give to my father. I know you always said ADs aren't your friends. And while that's true, I have luckily found one that was willing to sell me harder to find pieces, even though I'm sure they could sell these to any number of customers in my area. They earned my business. So the future for me, I think, goes outside of Rolex since I have, as you call it, a strong Rolex base. What do you think I should go for next? As at most, after 2019, I want to limit myself to one piece per year and something for the wife as well. I'm not a fan of chronographs generally. Would consider, but would consider one on my 50th. I hope to treat myself with a yellow or white gold day date 40. That's so that's definitely in the cards for me. Health and finances willing. So what does the pontiff think of the collection? What to do in the future? JLC, Reverso, Vacheron, Paddock, Calatrava. Thank you in advance for the review. Apologies again for the long and detailed email. And most importantly, I wish you good health and good fortune. Best regards from sunny Florida, Nathaniel. Well, Nathaniel, thank you so much for that there. Nathaniel's a Patreon supporter. Uh, Nathaniel, let me just get this straight here. First things first, let's just clarify a bit of the chit chat. Number one, number one, when you when you get this Pepsi, you don't give it to your father. You get him a steel date just, you keep the fucking Pepsi, okay? Your father's not going to know the difference, and this is the way to do it. Number two, you don't share your watches with the wife. Wives don't know how to look after them. You need to sit them down. I'm going to do a training video. <laughs> This video is for women to, this is for women how to treat watches because a lot of women, they're very rough, they're very hard, they do things that fuck me dead, they will really hurt their watch. So don't ever share your shit with the woman, get her a steel midsize, steel midsize, that's what I would be doing. So let's go through the collection. Uh, let's give it a tick or a nay. Let's go through this collection here. So firstly, we've got the two-tone 36 mil from your parents. Perfect. Don't ever sell it. Love it. Next thing, we've got the 1950s Le Coultre triple date. Now, just between you and me, I know your uncle was a cool fuck, but you do realize Jager Le Coultre and Le Coultre, they were slightly different, okay? They were slightly different. Le Coultre was a little bit more mass market. Jager Le Coultre was the more posh brand. So even though it's in gold, yes, it is a high quality watch. Just remember, it's not as good as a Jager Le Coultre. But it's still a great watch, still a very great watch. I got garbage from my relatives when they passed me down watches. Tudor Black Bay Burgundy, beautiful. That's good. That's the in-house one. Rolex Datejust 42, Datejust 241 steel with blue dial, perfect. That's selling for a massive premium, keep it. Well, selling for a premium, not a massive premium, selling for a premium. We've got the Milgauss, yes. We've got the GMT2 Root Beer, yes. We've got the Ceramic Black Sub Date, yes, in steel. We've got the, the Tudor uh, Burgundy ETA movement, yes, I agree. It's a good idea to have both, the ETA and the in-house, nothing wrong with that. We got the Explorer 1. Yes, love that collection, man. We are going hot and strong. Okay, my best advice to you. So let's have a look at this here. My advice to you is stick with Rolex. That's correct. Everything else is fucking dog shit. Fucking, fucking, fucking dog shit. Okay, don't buy any other brands except Rolex and Paddock. That's correct. I got to be honest with you. You like to buy new? Stick to Rolex. Do not repeat after me. Do not buy. These other brands are fucking stinkers. Fucking stinkers. So do not touch them with a barge pole. Uh, so for you. So what does the future hold? Uh, what should I get next? I want to limit myself one piece per year. Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. Rolex Steel Sports. I would say, can you get a, a Daytona out of these fuckers, okay? Get a Daytona, okay? Uh, the the Pepsi that comes in, keep it for yourself. Get your dad a date just, okay? I'm serious. He's not going to know the difference and fuck. You know, that's what I would do. Keep the Pepsi for yourself. Uh, no question at all about that. The next thing is, uh, okay. Uh, get the fucking Daytona, man. This... This woman at the AD sounds like she really likes you. 
fucking get the put the boot in for the Daytona. Um, <clears throat> for your fiftieth, I tell you honestly, fiftieth is a special birthday. I know I'm approaching it fast. I would get Patek Philippe. Patek Philippe. That's right. Get a Patek for yourself. Um, that's what I would do. Get a Patek. Depends on your budget. You're buying new, second hand. I'm not quite sure what your genre is on the paddocks, but uh, hey, there's some wonderful paddock Philippe's to get there. Um, the day date 40, actually, day date 40 would probably be be better. Okay, day date 40. Yeah, I agree. But look, man, you got to get. You gotta, you can't. I don't know if you should buy it brand new. Take a look at David S W to give you a bit of a price guide. Um. I'd possibly white gold or look get the one you love. I'd personally go paddock, paddock, paddock. Uh, now, let's have a look. The future for you, JLC Reverso. I think one Reverso is okay. You got to get a discount. Jager Lacoutre is very soft. It's nice to get a Reverso because your uncle's connection and that there. Vacheron overseas, stay the fuck away. Paddock, yes, Calatrava. I I would be thinking Calatrava wise. 5196, 5296, maybe a 6000 and 6000 or a 6000 and 6 or a 5127. That's what I'd be looking at there. Yes, paddock, paddock, paddock. Um, it's a great collection. You haven't done too badly. Please, get, let's just recap some rules. Number one, number one, the wife cannot wear your watches there for you. Get her a mid-size date just then keep yours to yourself which women don't know how to look after wrist watches number two when your dad when the pepsi comes in fuck you keep that you get him a date just okay he's not going to know the difference get him a date just okay get him a date just keep the fucking pepsi and number three don't buy non rolex and paddock only jlc maybe one reverso one reverso is okay but man you want a discount this is not You've got to understand, it is fucking nasty. This is nasty shit. Uh, I would seriously say to you, one reverso, stay away from Vacheron. Stay the fuck away from Vacheron. That sinks like a stone. Paddock, 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 paddock. That's what I would do. Um, you didn't really tell me what sort of money you wanted to spend. Are you going to buy new or used? There's so many options there. If you're going to buy a new paddock, what would I buy? New paddock, I think, you know, if you've got unlimited money, okay, let's, 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 let's look at this. What would I buy for my 50th? If I had unlimited money, I'd probably buy a 5396. That's an annual calendar. It's very, very elegant, beautiful. Uh, a 5205 is another option. That's another annual calendar. I do have an annual calendar. I got a 5035, okay? That was the first annual calendar by Paddock, 5035. I love my Paddocks. If you've got secondhand money, what would I buy? I would tend to say secondhand wise, I reckon for your 50th, a nice big size, because you're used to big watches with Rolex, I'd go for a 5130 World Time. That's right, it's a precious metal on a leather strap, get it rose gold, yellow gold, white gold, doesn't matter. I would get a 5130. Uh, probably I'd try and get that pre-owned because that's a superseded model anyhow. The current model is very cool, but I want to get value. We're talking value here. If you are looking for value, another great option is just a simple paddock, Calatrava for your 50th, 5196. Manual wine, Calatrava, absolutely, lutely stunning. Absolutely stunning sucker. So, guys, that's that's my advice on paddock. Um, basically, look, you can get a Reverso, but don't buy too many other brands. They sink like a stone. Remember, it's Rolex and Paddock only. So that is exactly what I would be doing. I'd be sticking to those brands there. So, um, yes, that's the way it goes. That's been a fantastic review. You've got a lovely collection, beautiful pieces. Uh, don't share them with the wife. The wife's going to damage them. Don't do that. Um, so that's exactly what my advice is. Fantastic collection. Thank you for your Patreon support. Remember, guys, like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends, and don't forget to sponsor me on Patreon. 
You can sponsor me for a couple bucks a month. I give you special things. Look at this. This video here, instead of being 10 minutes, he's got 20 minutes because he's a Patreon supporter. Patreon supporter. So, Nathaniel, I thank you and keep going. Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. Stay away from other fucking dogs. Stay the fuck away from other dogs. Get one reverso. Yeah, get a, a paddock or two, but stick to fucking Rolex. I'm Paul Pluter. Tell me what you fuckaroonies think of that. Nice one, Arch. Great vid. Nice collection. Very nice collection. Just make sure you don't let the bitches wear your Rolex. Oh. Hey, Archie Luxury fans. If you're into luxury, then you got to be into 66 Buick Rivieras. Check out my son and I, Alex, as we restore this beautiful 66 Buick. Neighbors are having a picnic, you know, having fun and stuff. Me, I'm doing cars. It's what I've done my whole life. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Mark Goldberg for Archie Luxury AC3, the Pontiff Satan DeVille. I want to sincerely thank you for having sat through this video because I know it was awful. But you know what? You do it for the greater good of humanity. Thank you so much. Now, a couple of quick pieces of homework. Now that you've watched this video, I would like you to hit thumbs up. If you must, hit thumbs down. But if you'd hit thumbs up, I would especially appreciate it. Go ahead and leave a really nasty comment and tell him how awful this content was. But most importantly of all, the entire reason that I am linking up with Archie Luxury in the first place. I am a published author. Let dogs be dogs. Available in bookstores, Amazon, and electronically somewhere near you. Remember, Archie Luxury, he's not just a figment of your imagination.